The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. So our last presenter of the day is Mr. Tom McCann. He is presenting on concrete removal using hydro demolition. And uh, in, in keeping with uh, our last presenter, Tom is a true expert in hydro demolition. He works for Hi Rampart Hydro Services. He's a senior estimator there. He's got an engineering degree as well and uh, is a member of ICRI as well as uh, as working here with us at ACI. So welcome so much, Tom. Thank you. First, I want to thank uh, Chris and the committee for allowing me to uh, present this information to you today. Uh, I also want to thank Mr. Pat Winkler. Uh, Pat has kind of been a mentor for me for the last five to six years. And he and Mr. David Van Ocker uh, are the primary authors of this document. So the big question, uh, typically, this is the, the cover of the repair procedure. And first question is, well, what is hydro demolition? Uh, hydro demolition is the high speed erosion process uh, to remove concrete. Uh, it is removing the cement and paste and fines uh, from around the aggregate, and the aggregate falls out loose in your work area. Um, this document is really designed for owners, design professionals, and concrete repair contractors. Uh, it is also focused more on bonded overlays that are half an inch or greater in thickness, sort of well beyond uh, the CSP profiles uh, that have been discussed at random points during this uh, session. So also the document gets into the whys and whens and, and hows of hydro demolition. Uh, so the main one is well, why choose hydro? Well, it's a superior method of surface preparation. Uh, as you can see, it's a highly rough and bondable surface. Uh, it's really increased the surface area with which to place a repair material, uh, provides good interlocking uh, with the repair material. You're increasing your bond strength as a result, and it does a lot for your shear transfer capability. It's also going to remove uh, unsound concrete in the substrate and eliminate any micro fractures that were present, uh, particularly if you've done a, a mechanical method of prep first. Uh, you always want to uh, finish with hydro demolition. Uh, additionally, because it's robotic in nature, again, for these overlays that are half an inch uh, of thickness or greater, you're going to use these robots, and it's going to prevent your uh, working uh, force from getting all these soft tissue injuries and back injuries uh, with regards to uh, impact methods like jackhammers. Uh, because it's a wet process, you're now eliminating silicosis. Uh, the dust is trapped within the water. Um, this is becoming prevalent, as uh, Mr. Emmons had mentioned earlier today, uh, because OSHA has now started its enforcement of the silica exposure laws. No rebar damage. Uh, this is a big thing. It actually will clean the rebar uh, to a sandblasted-like appearance. Uh, even existing wire ties that might be present in a uh, top mat of rebar will, will still be there uh, after hydro demolition, and it's, um, it's a much faster and efficient method of uh, concrete removal. So when do you want to use hydro demolition? Well, certainly for any concrete repair uh, project where you want to remove deteriorated concrete, uh, contaminated, uh, whether it's chloride contaminated or uh, carbonated concrete, It'll remove sound concrete, uh, particularly on partial depth uh, removals, uh, say on bridge decks or in parking structures, uh, even dams, uh, where you need to provide clearance under that top mat to place your repair material. And certainly, you, it's great for removing concrete from around uh, other uh, metal embedded features. This first item, anchors, this is more uh, in line with like a construction j uh, dam anchor, not so much another type of anchor, which we'll get into here shortly. Uh, expansion joint hardware uh, is an excellent method uh, to remove concrete from around those items. Uh, pipe conduit, welded wire mesh, you don't want to get caught up in a uh, rotor mill. Uh, you also want to use it when you want to minimize your mechanical vibrations to the surrounding structure. This is really uh, prevalent in parking garages where you have occupied space above, below, to the side, laterally of the parking garage. Uh, this will mitigate those concerns. 
Uh, should, however, um, mechanical methods be used uh, as your first um, bulk removal of concrete, again, hydro demolition should be your final surface prep uh, to eliminate any of the micro fractures that were introduced by that mechanical removal. But uh, road milling or cold milling uh, is a good method uh, to do first a bulk removal process and then uh, finalizing with hydro demolition. Number of things uh, that need to be considered uh, when using hydro. You certainly want to ensure that the runoff or the wastewater is going to be contained within your work area. And again, provided you're maybe in a parking structure where there's occupied space, you certainly don't want uh, those areas to be contaminated with wastewater. You also want to ensure that in post-tension structures, water may uh, remove the sheathing and enter into the cabling, and uh, that could be a concern. Hydro demolition, so this is the other anchor uh, that I was uh, just mentioned a moment ago. Uh, you want to you want to ensure that post-tension anchorages don't uh, become loosened uh, when performing hydro demolition. There's a lot of energy stored uh, in these tendons and it could cause uh, serious personal injury. And of course, uh, you're gonna compromise the structural integrity. And uh, lastly, shoring may be required within a particular structure. And um, as had been mentioned here previously today, uh, you wanna have a independent license uh, PE or engineering firm to address any shoring designs that you'll have in the structure. So what type of equipment uh, might roll up to a job site? Uh, this is a common uh, delivery system. Uh, and following the, the story of the water, uh, you'll have your inlet water filter. Most uh, hydro demolition applications are specified to use potable water sources. Sometimes that's not uh, always done and therefore it's important to have this primary water filter. You also want to have a small reserve tank of water uh, so that in case the major source of water has turned off, uh, you still have uh, some backup so that the pumps don't cavitate. Um, so the water then does feed into your engine pump assemblies. High pressure water pumps, there's, there's low pressure pumps, lower pressure I should say, uh, in the range of 15,000 to 25,000 PSI, uh, all the way up to 40,000 PSI, uh, considered more to be an ultra high pressure system. Uh, flow rates range anywhere from seven to 100 gallons a minute. Uh, the seven gallons, the lower end, this is gonna be more for your manual type of hydro demolition applications, hand lances, uh, rotary deck, um, deck mowers, and we'll touch upon that, and those will get you your your CSP profiles that ICRI discusses. Uh, but when you're operating in the high and ultra high pressure, if you have a lower pressure pump, uh, you'll need a lot of water. Uh, you'll be on the high end of this water range uh, to perform concrete removals. And conversely, uh, when you're at the ultra high pressure end, you're gonna need 50% or less of the high end of, of your water flow in order to again achieve the same amount of work on the concrete structure. And lastly, uh, the water that's been compressed in the uh, positive displacement pumps uh, can be transported uh, to the hydro demolition robot, which is typically stored in the back of the uh, support trailer that arrives to the site and the ultra high pressure or high pressure water uh, can be uh, let out to the robot hundreds of feet away uh, from where the support trailer is located. What do some of these pieces really look like? Uh, so here are examples of what a hydro demolition robot uh, looks like. Uh, here we're uh, doing a full depth removal on a bridge deck uh, on precast panels. Uh, again, here you see the ultra high pressure hoses that the uh, support trailer can be parked hundreds of feet away from the work area. This is a deck mower. Uh, this one is hydraulically driven. Again, uh, now we're getting into maybe some systems that'll g achieve those uh, ICR, ICSP profiles. Uh, and also hand lance removals are good for uh, grouting uh, removal, uh, caulking removal. Also get column uh, surface prep done for uh, the purpose of uh, CFRP. Uh, here in this picture, is this individual has got all of the uh, appropriate 
uh, personal protective equipment or otherwise known as PPE. The key item here is hand lance users will typically use uh, steel metatarsal uh, and shin guards. Uh, that is to prevent the tip of the gun from potentially coming back towards your uh, lower extremities and causing, again, uh, serious personal injury. So now you've, you're doing hydro demolition and you're generating all these spoils. You'll have a lot of solid debris to take care of, a lot of wastewater. Uh, how is that cleaned up? First of all, it needs to be done uh, immediately or very close behind the hydro demolition process. Uh, you do not want the solids and, and spoils to re-adhere to the deck. Again, here in, say, Vegas, this would be a, a real concern. You really want to watch after that. Um, it can be done robotically, uh, as you see here. Uh, here you have a, a robotic uh, vacuum hood uh, that traverses back and forth in the hydro demolished work area, uh, vacuuming up all of the spoils that have been left behind, tamped behind by the hydro demolition robot. A lot of these robots will have integral uh, 10,000 PSI water jets. So the water jets are shooting underneath that top mat, churning up all of your debris and fines and sending it into the vacuum hood and uh, can be transported hundreds of feet away to a vacuum truck. Uh, if you don't have robotic methods, uh, manual methods are also uh, just as good. These uh, technicians are operating 10,000 psi pressure washers. Uh, hand lances can also, or air lances can also be used. And you want to get underneath the rebar, uh, drive all of the debris and spoils up onto a drive lane and then you'll have uh, skid stairs with a variety of attachments come in and power broom or uh, bucket all of that material up to be disposed of uh, in roll-offs on site. Then on the flip side, we talked about now the, all the solid debris and what to do with the wastewater. This process uh, is highly variable across the country, um, and it all depends a lot on what structure you're working on. Uh, in Pretty congested uh, urban areas where you'll probably be working a lot of parking structures. There's no real method to uh, transport this wastewater uh, anywhere to, to treat it. So it has to be done on site and is treated for local sanitary sewer discharge. When you're in a more rural spot, a bridge deck in uh, middle of nowhere, uh, a lot of uh, the entities and owners will permit discharge on ground uh, and allow the water to evaporate or absorb into the ground, but first passing through uh, a number of filtration methods. Uh, could be a fine aggregate, uh, geotextile fabric, et cetera. Um, then once that's all dried, those pits, uh, all of the debris is reclaimed out of the pit and uh, filled back in with soil. Uh, but the key thing, there is one common thread to uh, always adhere to, is to never discharge uh, directly into any existing waterway. The wastewater, the properties of it, initially contain uh, a lot of cement fines. The total suspended solids are in the order of 10,000 to 15,000 milligrams per liter. pH is extremely elevated, obviously due to the alkali nature of concrete. Uh, so what do you have to do? Well, to meet a lot of sanitary sewer discharge requirements around the country, the total suspended solids have to be filtered or settled down to roughly 300 milligrams per liter, plus or minus 10 percent is very common in the U.S., and pH lowered between 5 and 10, uh, neutral being the average, uh, neutral level of 7. But again, your best practice systems uh, are going to have a three-phase process. Uh, you're going to want to filter first, allow for settling second, and then uh, your final step is going to be your pH neutralization. So now that everything is cleaned up, uh, hopefully you have removed all of the uh, debris and dust and grease and oils from the worked area. Uh, you want to verify, again, the absence of all these inhibitors and then perform some form of testing. Uh, again, as mentioned uh, by Mr. Goodwin and Mr. Emmons earlier today, uh, the two main guidelines are ICRI uh, guideline number 210.3, ASTM C1583 uh, are good. To Good documents to follow. Next is safety. And this is emphasized a little bit stronger here than might be in the uh, repair procedure. Uh, safety should be a really a core value of any organization. 
and personally also. It's a 24-7 endeavor um, to make safety, say, just a priority. Uh, a lot of times a priority will imply that it's a hot topic in the moment, uh, but then other priorities may come uh, in a day, a week, a month, and and supplant the uh, the idea of safety. So it really does need to be a core value, uh, particularly in this specialized field. The equipment, again, operates at extremely high pressures. Uh, you need to have trained individuals that are experienced in the use of this equipment have taken appropriate training courses and safety courses. I always want to shield the equipment uh, to minimize the possibility of flying debris. This is typically done with uh, steel shrouds that are built around the, uh, the shank of the robot. Uh, if you're in a parking structure, all electrical conduits need to be de-energized. This is very important and unfortunately comes up more than it should. Uh, but this is something always to be uh, considered, again, primarily in uh, parking structures. Uh, areas below the work area should always be closed, uh, particularly if you're going to do partial or full depth removal. There's always the possibility that uh, there will be a severe delamination or an area of unsound concrete. Therefore, uh, there is the potential to blow through a certain deck. And the entire work area uh, must be free of personnel and equipment um, when doing th those type of removals. And more importantly, all the personnel in the work area must wear PPE uh, on bridges. Um, it's a little bit different than the example you saw with the hand lance operator. Uh, heavy highway uh, safety glasses, hearing protection comes in the form of either earbuds or earmuffs, sometimes both. Uh, hard hat, long pants, long sleeve reflective vest, otherwise known as class three uh, in the heavy highway industry. Class two is the sleeveless, that does not, uh, it's not sufficient. Steel toe or composite boots. Uh, the composite boots need to meet a specific ASTM standard. I don't remember the exact number, but uh, composites are now being used in place of steel toe. And gloves are becoming more and more prevalent uh, on heavy highway or uh, energy facility locations in terms of uh, safety. People that are operating the robotic uh, methods of hydro demolition don't necessarily have to have uh, the steel metatarsal and, and shin guards that we had seen previously with the hand lance. And last, we'll touch upon the pre-construction meeting. Uh, so it's very important, obviously, to have reps there from uh, the owner to the design engineers to all your subcontractors and contractors. Uh, again, safety is going to be your top priority, uh, always ensuring that there's a proper program in place uh, for the personnel, property, and equipment. And then you're going to be addressing uh, systematically the location and layouts of a number of uh, items. One is the work area, and of course everybody likes to be on schedule, which I might be a little late right now. Uh, shoring, uh, if applicable, hydro demolition equipment, what's going to be used on site. Uh, is there a water supply? <laughs> you can't do hydro demolition without water, so uh, making sure you're permitting for, say, a hydrant access uh, is in place. Uh, in Closed systems, again, like a parking structure, exhaust system is uh, important to uh, have in place. Fuel system, including deliveries, again, can the fuel be delivered into the structure that you're working in. Uh, wastewater containment is always important. We touched upon that earlier, uh, including your treatment methods and your uh, testing, who's going to be doing the testing, what frequency will the test be performed. And lastly, your debris removal equipment, including having the appropriate drive lanes open. Again, inside a closed facility, it'll be hard to get the debris out without uh, proper drive lanes uh, to get, the, get that out. And I think that is it. And I thank you all for your time and attention. Hey, thank you, Tom.